everybody. Welcome to the uh, Journey More Often sponsored Tipsy Tag Along podcast here at Capstone Vineyards. This place is awesome. Can you see behind me how crazy ridiculous the view is? It's gorgeous. And it, you know, we heard that the wines are as spectacular as the view, so we're about to find out. But first, the public service announcement. You can drink but don't drink and drive and don't drink and do stupid stuff. You know, that's just, that's ridiculous in and of itself. You can't do that. Uh, you shouldn't do that. So don't do that. Anyway, so here we are. I'm Gary Moore with uh, Tipsy Tagalongs and Journey More Often. We have Cassie Gaunts, our co-host uh, for today. And we have Theo from Capstone Vineyard. So, all right. Wow, this is really cool. Now, oh, uh, the other thing that I want to say is we're doing this before they open. Okay, so small businesses are small businesses. You know, it's tough when you have a small business. You can't just break away all their clients and customers coming in. It's just too hard. So you'll see today uh, in the morning and tomorrow in the morning we'll be doing a podcast where you know the business isn't open yet, and that's so that Theo can relax and spend time with us and talk to us rather than be worried about making sure that all his customers are okay. All right, so all of that out of the way, uh, we have some wines here. I think we have, I think you said three whites and two reds yep. that, that we'll be going through. Um, why don't you go ahead and pour and describe the first one? Certainly. Uh, so this is our sparkling Chardonnay made in the Champagne method or the traditional method. Chardonnay. Um, we do. I find Chardonnay is a really good base for traditional method sparkling wines. Um, it really holds the yeast characteristic uh, quite a bit. Um, it has good weight to it as well. A lot of times when you're making traditional method sparkling wines or any sparkling wine, you are picking pretty early with a fair amount of acidity, so you like to be able to balance that acidity um, with the weight of the wine. Red blends are everywhere, but mm -hmm. you don't hear that much about white blends. And, and knowing what I know, which is not as much as you, but knowing what I know about um, white wines, a white blend could come off really, really nice. Yeah, no, I, I think so. Um, the, that's a kind of the fun part. In, in the, you know, it's all fun, but uh, <laughs> you've got kind of the science and the chemistry and the microbiology happening in the primary fermentation. And then the art form, and I think the, the winemakers So this is, it's typical, it's dry, it's, but it's got just a, just a touch of sweetness. Yeah, uh, um, but so not the, a lot. No, so this is considered, would be considered an extra brute. Uh, so it's got two bands per meter. Uh, um, so we can add that area. And 
that changes because some vintages are a little bit richer, um, and so you can uh, you don't have to you don't need to balance the acidity so much. In some Um, I think the process is really neat. Um, nice. it's, it's a harder thing to, um, there's a lot that can go wrong, um, but I think, I think, I really like the whole um, process of taking something that's still and making it something that's sparkling. And it's the progression of the wines often, because I think winemaking, the whole part of winemaking is about watching the evolution of the wine, right? And there's no finer example of that than watching the wine that's sparkling. So just to, you wanted to play around with it. Yeah, yeah, and so. And that's how it started, and then it progressed to this, which is really good. So yeah, yeah, so we've done a lot of like sparkling reds over in the past, um, both the Charmaz, um, which is a natural representation as well, of and force from the ones, uh, taking cider and throwing that into the garage as well, just kind of fun with the cider. It goes in, smelling and tasting like apples, comes out, and smelling and tasting like pears. Um, and so we used to have. Intriguing. Yeah, we used to have a really um, we have a big ability to alter and change like the bottles just um, work on the wine at the same time. So it's just fun to see it play out in different different iterations. Right, yeah, so I mean yeah, it, the iterations, that's when you're doing it over and over again, but you're changing like little variations of parts of the process. And when you get to where that's where I want it. Then that that's the theoretical recipe. So you gotta gotta be disciplined and write it all down or keep track of it, log it all in as far sure. as how, how you how you do it. And you know when you get to that spot, you're like, yeah, now now it's good. I can I can relax and, and continue to make a good. Uh, it's just yeah. I mean, it's delicious. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. It's, got, it, it's got some. So let's talk about the wine and what you would eat with. It. So actually, one of my favorite um, pairings with the style of Chardonnay and Champagne is actually the salty kettle chips. Mm -hmm. Love them. There you go. <laughs> um, super simple, but they just they go hand in hand. This fried chicken. So when we do American Wine Journey, we pair wines with food. Nice. But this is you're you're telling people, okay. So when you're when you're partaking of this, this is what you want to jump into. And, and so the I love the the ch the kettle chip scenario and the, the fried chicken scenario because everybody's like, oh, it's white. We have to do whatever, right? You know, and it, it's a champagne like you know. That we have to do so, but that's not how wine works, you know. All, all sorts of different wine making can be super different foods and enjoy them even more than just in the glass. You know, sure. And it paired up. And so, 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 So that's, you know, that's just adding to the, 
the flavor of the, the location, right? <laughs> Which is fine. Um, and it wasn't too loud, and it wasn't too long, so we're all good to go. How about we move on to the, the next one? Sure. Um, so we have our Sauvignon Blanc here. Um, and so Sauvignon Blanc is a fun one. Again, um, kind of in the vein of not being uh, in love or using so many blocks and stuff, definitely continuing more towards that. Some say the old world in style. It's got some nice kind of uh, mm. Eastern Chef components, um, it's got great acidity. Um, definitely not opulent in the nose, it's not super tropical. It's really, um, and it's, it, it's not the typical uh, steel. Influence. No. It, it almost has an oaky influence in a sense. Well, so one of the tactics we use in the cellar, um, in order to add what is what are considered to be sort of acid like that, like ones that can be quite linear on the palate, and they kind of cut from the front to the back and it's kind of stacked on top of it. We'll ferment after primary fermentation, we'll actually we'll let it settle a little bit. The whole lot of dead yeast from the bottom of the tank with the wine. Start that way rather than um, externalities, it can add a lot of weight and it has really nice kind of nuance of the nose. I quite like it. It's also a good way to oxidize um, the dead yeast, and so it helps get the body of the yeast. It adds a lot of flavor. It adds a lot of flavor. It's surprising because a lot of Some are just like cut it off, you know. Are it's like taking an amlock. Yeah, right. <laughs> they're they're really crisp, and you're like, wow, this is crazy. But this one has a lot of really good flavor to it um, with uh, with a white wine. I mean, there are times when you want the crisp, uh, but this is a very good uh, alternative to the crisp. Uh, um, yeah, so much about wine. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm I'm really like that. What what would you what would you recommend eating with the, this one? Um, this obviously would go very well with any fish dish. Um, I think boulder fish. <laughs> it just hit me that I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I'm afraid of this one. Like, killer well. Great minerality, great roundness. Yeah. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a 
No. Oh, no, no, no. Give it a shot, you know. You know, try your best, but it won't happen. All right, yeah, just uh, do me a favor and pull that mic a little closer. I, for some reason, it, you're, we're having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, I got it. That's nice because, it, well, maybe you, know, you, you got to be uh, careful about the For scheduling a specific time when you can dedicate somebody to the, the you know the larger group, yeah. but uh, you know I, I know having worked at, at a vineyard myself, uh, you know it, they, they, they just come at any time sometimes. You know, it, 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 there's a void. It's, it's nice to have a reservation. You kind of think about having a reservation no matter where you're going. So uh, this is really good. It, we should uh, we should probably move on to the next one. Um, Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. So yeah, because because it, it's coming late, late enough that you could, you're you're you know with a white yeah. grape, you know, in that narrow region. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think one of my favorite descriptors of Rousseau is that you drink more like a, a red wine because it has a fair, fair, you know, it comes from the bond of the skin. Yeah. Hence, it's the third white. Going into yes. the reds after this. Okay, that, that was, uh, yeah, you might have even thought about that. <laughs> Theo, so, can you tell us about Roussan as a yes. bridal? It's Northern Rome, correct? Uh, yeah, same. yeah, so it's along with you and me and Roussan, and it's in the It's not as fickle as being We've been working with Damien a lot. I'm not a big fan of Damien, but it does have that weighty, because we only had it being quite weighty as well. Roussan actually craft crops well and, and uh, grows well <laughs> versus Viognier, which doesn't crop very well, but it grows very well. <laughs> um, and I have not tried Marsan. Marsan, I've tried growing it. I do like Marsan. Coming out of Rome. Right. Um, so I think it would be closer to the experimental. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I knew, I knew Marsan was coming read the, the name and I was like, yeah, this is like a French region mm -hmm, wine. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty cool. And, and I think you're right, Vignes is, is uh, the grapes can be very fickle. Uh, and if you don't get it like perfect, 
you don't have much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, well, you're going to bottle like five bottles kind of thing. And that's, yeah. it's, it's not literally. Literally. It's like we have a pruning video. It's the second and third bites. So with the French scenario where you're drinking a wine where uh, somewhere in the process a mistake was made but your taste is fine and there is a recovery process you know for the most part uh, so when it goes into the bottle you know, you've got this you've got this desirable product that people that people are gonna like and, and so you know, that whole process of Oh, nice, nice, nice. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Hey, no, so this is about as guard dog as I've seen Harold. <laughs> no. And if Harold and the guy coming out of the woods were like right next to each other, Harold would be just like wagging his tail. <laughs> have to be, you know, uh, assisted by, you know, a human, is that uh, my favorite is dogs eat other people's food, <laughs> dogs lick other people's babies that are like on the blanket or something. I've, I've literally seen these things happen. And worse, dogs actually drink other people's wine. <laughs> that probably is the worst offense that a dog can do. And so that's why it's important to make sure that, you know, if you're bringing a dog to a winery, um, the dog Be your dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I love that. I love that. It's okay. It's okay. We're good to go. Oh, that's fun. All right. So we, did, yeah, we just little little dog etiquette uh, break. Um, but uh, it's great. I mean, this is a good place for for uh, to bring your dog if you're gonna, gonna come out. Absolutely. And honestly, most people, realistically, most people, their dog is just sitting there. Right. You know, the only time Harold's okay. <laughs> well, it, it, the ones that know the the ones that know the drill, the dog should be sitting, yeah. you know, laying down, you know, to provide you know snacks and. Anyway, all right. So we are uh, moving on to Reds, I think. All right. So here we go. Now you'll notice that we're just pouring right in, and then we're mixing it together. You don't. You, you, you don't like <laughs> clean your glass out with water, correct? Because that just ruins the next wine. Exactly, we'll throw off the pH. Yeah. Um, so this is a fun one. Did you go? Do we need more glasses? No, we're good. Go? Um, so this is a Merlot. Um, okay, okay. Oh, nice. So this is um, a little bit, I wanted to pour the next one. So this is a uh, Merlot. About um, three acres of Merlot here on the site. Um, in 23, we took all of it from the one year of it. In 24, um, a bunch of which was about 30 of that, which was part of that portion of that. It's not sparkling. So he does, course. people. He <laughs> actually does know that. The barrel's really important. That's just yeah. what's happening. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with the barrels, you don't really do So, yeah, and people don't realize the, the, the amount of influence that a barrel has. You know, and it's not just how long you have it in the barrel, it's the...
guy would, he would literally go to France and he would tag the trees that he wanted. <laughs> I mean, for real. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And he would tag those trees and then, you know, it, they'd come back over and, and he would make the barrels. Which is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I mean, that ridiculous is the word of the day. But that guy, he just, but I mean, he, but he knew what he wanted. It is acidic, but it's not driving. Mm -hmm. That's not driving. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just such. Some some red wines that you drink and you're like, man, I gotta have food with this. You know, it's a great wine, but I gotta have food with this in order to tone it down slightly. Yeah. Uh, but this one, you can go either way. It's, so it's a very nice, um, it's a very nice um, balance of you know, solo. Food. And speaking of food, what food would you recommend? It's good to say good cheese. <laughs> yeah, right on. You see how long he hesitated? I mean, he just took so much time to make that. No, I love that. Yeah, love that, that. that is, mm -hmm. yeah, that, it, and it makes sense, yeah, mm -hmm. because you, that would really enhance both. Now, would you, uh, would you cook the steak with the wine? Um, would you let do a little, you know, that's why that's that wine that's good to eat for 24 hours. I always think duck with the too. Yeah, well, well the, the, but if the Merlot isn't, isn't as powerful, mm -hmm. it's going to get swallowed up. Right? I mean, the duck is going to swallow a normal Merlot, but this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, we'll stand up for the back. Yeah. But I mean, you, 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 I, you guys have both had more Merlots than I ever have, but uh, the reality of it is the Merlots are softer. And, and, it will. It just overpowers. So you got you other modes. You can't have that. seafood and duck and I was like I really want that duck <laughs> but I'm, I'm at the no beach ever. I'm at the beach I'm obligated to have rock fish and something you know
Yeah, spring break. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a lot of friends on here. Like, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like Cass is my friend right now. But you know, as soon as we turn the camera off, we're you know. gone. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Wow. Just so you, how many acres total? It's a 62 acre Yeah, I, I, yeah. So how many acres under mine? For a small vineyard. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. And we also do. Um, yeah, it's a lot of good wine I mean, you're looking at it, you got really nice slopes going down. It's certainly, you know, I'm not shivering or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, this kind of breeze in a 95 degree day would be awesome. But it's cold. Not cold. I mean, it's not cold for an event. Interesting road to chase. I love brandy. Um, yeah, yeah. But a lot of the winemakers that I know, they have their own private stock of brandy. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and there's just <laughs> in the brandy, there's no way to really accelerate. So brandy doesn't really. Yeah, that's that's tough. 
so five years from now, me? He's like, he's like not into that. Yeah. No, because because where I was at, we had these stories. Yeah. Done a lot of yeah. The wine So you know what makes me yeah. Happy. It's just not. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, then, and, and that's really important, right? Because you got to figure out what you're doing. Where are you willing to tinker? Because some people are like, ah, I'm just tinker and make some brandy. Other people are like, no, nah, not my thing. And you know, if you're doing this, it works. I think we've got more yeah. sparkles. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so now we're good. Oh, and now we're going to go that direction. Yeah, but the sparkling, so the sparkling's been a big hit lately. Uh, so, people have, you know, like it more and more. I've gone to some places where they've had like three or four, and, you know, and to the point where you could do an entire tasting of sparkling. And you're like, well, that's interesting. You know, I mean, everybody does that. Here, folks. <laughs> Force carb. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you're not seeing a ton that. of that around in Virginia, so I think it's really awesome. It's very niche to get into, and I think it's going to take. Oh, it's going to take a while. Plus, you got a you got a pretty good uh, captive audience, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got Northern Virginia in and of itself is pretty big cool. nowadays. Uh, All these things that you have to do.
Okay, so that's it was bottled in. Most wines are meant to be consumed in a year or two, period, because they're not built to last that long. This one here is seven years in the bottle, which is saying something. So that it's great. And it really does taste good. It tastes good. And I think, yeah, I think it's good. Maybe Zelda has to work for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is called the Virginia Day. Vegetables. Now I'm, I'm really putting the other test. <laughs> what vegetables? Just throwing that out there, you know, it's like one of those things where you're saying, 
you know, should I share this? And you know, like you said, put a super high price tag on it. But you could probably you could probably drive that. It, it would do. It would. It would accommodate a higher price tag um, because it is a over line, and it does. It's more than what it is. But you know, the reality of it is, this is the definite one where you just stop sharing. <laughs> No, this is good. This is fun. We learned a lot today. Okay. So, Theo, what would you say you're most excited about over the next couple of years, just with the site and everything here? Oh, yeah, production <laughs> That's fair. I don't mind being a traveling winemaker, uh, but it would be nice to have That is hard when it's all set. Yeah. It is hard. Yeah. That would be nice. We need to build a. Uh, right now, we're offering the guy just right around this area, you know, you could spend one day, one day. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. honestly, you could probably spend two days, you know, yeah. because, uh, you know, I, I quit going to like five one per day. Well, I don't think everyone here offers the same experiences. Yeah. just to have a sip of it so uh, but you're gonna get you know the, uh, the understanding it and then if uh, you know you're lucky enough to have Theo here while you're doing the wine tasting he can actually tell you how how to you know uh, enjoy your wine and what to eat with your wine as well because you you've been like boom 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 I mean you haven't really hesitated at all so it's either you've had this conversation like several times before or you just enjoyed it <laughs> that but, is. but he's a chef. Okay, so you guys do. That's a really nice, you know. Pair combo. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dad joke and all that good stuff. Yeah, no, but that's great. I mean, that makes, yeah, that makes it a little quicker to discover. Right? Yeah. If you have to if you have to work with a, somebody else who's not a chef, then you have to figure it out on your own. Whereas if you have a chef, you just play. Right? You just play. And some of that is to play. So if you eat, if you have a food and you bring a wine in, then you're you're testing to see if it works or not. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that we do is encourage people to do that that thing. You know, there are some things, and, and you'll find out what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. And, and so, you know, my my theory is, okay, try it. If it doesn't work, then, then you know, cap it, put it over there, and have a food that you know is going to work. Okay, and then grab another. <laughs> but you know, it, you know, it's an experimental scenario, and you you got to be uh, you got to be open to that experiment. Mm -hmm. and, and to determine. But, yeah, this has been fabulous. I mean, I've really uh, loved the 
experience here. Thank you yes. very much for, you. for hosting us. Yeah. I appreciate that very much. This has been great. The wines have been awesome. Yeah, awesome. Right. yeah. The, the next level up. So, uh, you know, everybody, why don't you, uh, you know, come on out to Capstone because these Thank guys, these, yeah, these guys are, are put together some, some good product and they have a great location. So if you haven't, if, if you if you don't like the view, you'll like the one. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to, you know, throw out there before we uh, wrap it up? Um, this, again, I'm going back to our neighborhood. We have a lot of really good wine so it's uh, really trying to really have create a wine destination. Um, we go all the to, and so there's a lot of very TVs around. Maps, you'll see they'll all come up. Yeah, uh, wineries here. That gets all your wineries, and, and, and there's a there's a whole bunch here, and it's pretty sweet. Uh, so you get a lot of, of, of you don't have to travel too far because in this in this area, um, you know, four miles can take you 20 minutes. That's true. That is. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of mountain roads, so there is something. To So just to the next winery is like a mile and a half, even though it's right there. You know, you can see that tree line. Yeah, you can see the tree line to the to the winery. Um, yeah, and this view, you know, if you have it, you have it. Yeah, so, yeah, it's very exciting. All right, uh, let's wrap this. YouTube channel at Journey More Often. It's easy to spell. Uh, more is with two O's. Uh, and you'll see probably uh, almost three dozen podcasts out there right now. So we've got a lot of podcasts doing things from travel blogs to American Wine Journey, which is, you know, now we're doing pairing wine with food. He's pairing food with wine. So today we got Theo pairing food with wine. I think the, uh, the killer one was the skirt steak and the chimichurri. So, you know, join us and uh, until the next time, Enjoy life, journey more often. Thank you.